reviewed Family Values and Hot Rides in Fate of the Furious. One of the givens of Fast and Furious is that the latest movie will be bigger and more enjoyably ludicrous than the last. The mini skirts will be shorter, the toys zoomier, the stunts more delirious. Yet, like every successful series, this one delivers its sweet new bits and pieces in reassuringly familiar packaging. James Bond has Queen and Country. Vin Diesel as Dominic Toretto the monotonal Fast and Furious Pater Familias has Cars and Camaraderie, an ideal combo for movies about American outsiders whose home has always been one another. Family is the most important word in these movies, the one that s dropped with moist emotion and hushed Sunday sermon reverence. It s the idea that has held the franchise together movie to movie, race to race, prayer to prayer and an episodic soap about kith, kin, and custom cars. It is what connects this franchise to its fans, another kind of family, no one that pays to sit down at the table. It is what has always bound D.O.M. to his wife, Letty, Michelle Rodriguez, and the rest of his crew, most crucially Brian, the cop turned soul partner played by Paul Walker, who died in an offset car collision in 2013. The new movie's title, The Fate of the Furious seems like a nod to the lingering existential crisis created by M.R. Walker's death as do the tears that fall in the story. They reshed over time but before they are, the movie does what as expected, which is cut loose attractive characters in different choreographed formations and assorted machines in locales. Directed by F. Gary Gray, straight out of Compton, this one opens in Havana, where the young local beauties swirling around D.O.M. and Letty move and dress more or less like the other young beauties in the series, as if they were part of a continuing global house party, this time with Che Guevara and prettily peeling buildings. M.R. Gray, an action movie veteran, gets that party started quickly. D.O.M. and Letty are hanging out in the new Havana, which in this case means chatting in Spanish and English while checking out a vintage car with a boat motor under the hood. It is a nice emblem of the movie's old school opener, which involves some macho posturing that leads to D.O.M. racing in a rusted out beater. As he drives, ripping past one classic American car after another, he clutches the wheel, the camera pointing up at him. Like a supermodel's long legs, M.R. Diesel's sculptured, Often bared arms are one of his trademarks, and they do a lot of work, signifying strength, and command. Here, though, they shudder. Both the old cars and DOMS unsteadiness set up a movie that clearly still needs to contend with MR. Walker's death even as it delivers the goods. To that end, the filmmakers quickly isolate DOM from his crew, Tyrese Gibson, Ludacris, Ed Oil. And give him a proxy heartbreak. Elsewhere, the franchise as increasingly most valuable players, Dwayne Johnson and the bouncy Jason Statham, take care of business, going hard and funny. Kurt Russell shows up as a man in black with a newbie played by Scott Eastwood, whose resemblance to Big Daddy Klimt adds intertextual genre free song. Charlize Theron slinks in as a villainous hacker in silly blonde dreads jetting around while doing a lot of fast, furious typing. Punctuated by crashes and drums of goo, the movie moves to a dependable blockbuster beat, as a little exposition is followed by an action scene, and more exposition is followed by a bigger, noisier, nuttier action scene. As the cars zig and the storyline zags, these sequences grow baroque, defying reason and gravity, which have progressively come under siege in this franchise. In New York, Cars swan dive off buildings or cut corners like rampaging dogs or, have fitted with bond-like gizmos, harpoon a bucking ride. There is a not Melville thing going on here, in a Bond-esque battle in Russia that typifies the franchise as expanded reach, a submarine breaches like Moby Dick. Zoom, crash, repeat with squealing, burning and flaming tires at s all predictably absurd and self-mocking, and often a giggle when not a total nom. The tedium that sets in is a function of the blockbuster ethos in which everything must smash and ignite so that a solitary man can emerge phoenix like to fight another franchise fight. Yet while D.O.M. endures baptisms of fire, he is never genuinely alone. 
Part of the draw of the Fast and Furious movies has always been their multicultural cast, but the series' strength is a utopian communitarianism that insists the group must be greater than any one man or nation. That SYDOM will only ever be the franchise's co-pilot, it's the crew that rules.